In our previous example, we looked at how we use arrays and we looked at a linear search. Now we'd like to do a similar type thing, but with a binary search. A binary search is going to have a huge advantage over a linear search in that it's going to reduce the number of searches we have to perform. Just to kind of give you an idea of how it works, maybe you remember playing a game as a child and you ask someone to pick a number between 1 and 100. Well, odds are you wouldn't pick 1, then 2, then 3, and then 4, etc. until you found the correct answer. If you were like most people, you said, well, 50, and then you asked if you were high or low. And if you were high, then you said, oh, okay, I now know that my answer is between 1 and 50. And if they said low, you said, well, it's between 50 and 100, eliminating half of the possible answers. This is exactly what a binary search does. What it's going to do is it's going to look in the middle of the array. Then it's going to look to see, is the item I'm searching for bigger or less than what the array value is? If it's larger, it says, okay, I'm going to search in the bottom half of the array. And I keep reducing every time it guesses, I reduce the number of elements to search through by half. In fact, for 100 elements, you can find the answer on average with only seven tries. Now, you may have a few more, but the average winds up being about seven tries. If you did a linear search, sometimes you might find on the first item, but you also might find on the last item. If you ran this thousands and thousands of times, you'll find it to equal to about half of what number of items your array is. So going from 50 down to seven is a huge improvement, but it gets to be even a more dramatic improvement as your arrays grow in size. So for example, going from 100 to 200 means you only added one extra search. Going from 200 to 400 is just one more search. 400 to 800 is just another. That means if you increase the size of your array from 100 up to 1,000, you're only looking at about three, maybe four more searches. So it becomes a very, very efficient way to do a search. So let's look at how we're gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna copy and paste this item from my linear search because it's very similar. The only difference is we're gonna use binary search instead of linear search. So we're gonna make that change real quick. And now let's go down to our binary search function. I'm gonna start with a very similar process where I'm gonna give a return index. And it will be negative one if the item's not found. I'm now gonna need a couple extra variables. Low, which we're gonna start at zero. That's our zero index. High, which is going to be my array size. And I'm going to need a midpoint. My midpoint is going to be the middle of low and high. Now we're going to use a while loop to determine if we need to keep searching or if we've not been able to find the answer. I'm going to say while low is less than high. From here, we're going to check to see what the value of our index at the midpoint is. So if values at the midpoint is equal to my search item, Remember to use a double equal sign for checking for equality. I'm going to set my return index equal to my midpoint. This will give me the index of the item I'm looking for. And then I will break. The break will exit out of our while loop and let us quit searching because we won't need to search anymore. Else if the values at my midpoint is less than my search item. So if the value is less than, 
that means that I'm going to be above that value. So what it's going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say low is equal to mid plus one. This will let me go in and do a new search. This is going to update my low value. Now, if this is not true, I have an else. If it's not true, we have our else statement. That means the values at our midpoint is greater than our search item. So we need to search below it. So in that case, high is going to equal mid minus one. Now, the reason for saying low equals mid plus one or high equals mid minus one is very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust where we are. I know we're not at the midpoint, so we're going to move one more item in the correct direction. Once I'm done with this, I need to recalculate my mid value and say mid is going to equal low plus high divided by two. And this will run through my whole process. Then I will hit the bottom of my while loop. I'll check to see if low is still less than the high value. If it is, we'll check our if statements again. And we'll repeat this process over and over again. So this simple process allows us to search very efficiently. So even though we had to write a few more lines of code, if you look at it, it's about twice, maybe three times the amount. We're doing much less searches. Remember, a search for 100 items returns about seven search times compared to 50 for a linear search. Let's run this real quick. We have our full list of 75 items that gets printed out. And then you'll notice that we found the item with the linear search at index 22, and we found it with the binary search also at 22. I'm going to scroll up real quick. I'm going to comment out this little section where we're printing out our array. We don't need that because I'm going to make my array a lot larger, 750 items. If I run this, here you can find the items were both found at 600 and 19. Run it again. Both found at 654. This should be consistent. We should always find the items at the same time. If we were to put a timer on this, however, you would find that the binary search is much faster than our linear search. So this assumes that our array is in order. If the array is not in order, we're going to have a different problem. And how we're going to solve that is by putting it in order. And we'll look at how to do that in an upcoming video.